I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Uh, members present tonight are myself, Mayor Morrow, Council Members C.O. Dillon, Gearbaugh, uh, McClellan, Mitchell, and Mayor Pro Tem Tar. From City Staff, we have City Manager Campbell, Deputy Clerk Bloom, uh, Deputy Treasurer McDonough, Police Chief Hart, DPW Director Fordyce, Parks and Rec Director Scruggs, and City Superintendent Engineer Rubel. The rest of you who are in the audience this evening, we welcome you and we encourage you to sign in in the back to my left. You may also pick up a copy of the agenda on the table. Uh, at this time, the Chair would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as amended, noting that new business item 18-119 was added to the agenda subsequent to the packets going out on Thursday morning. So moved. As amended, Mr. Seal? As amended. Thank you, sir. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman McClellan. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of approving the agenda as amended signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. I have it, and the motion carries unanimously. There are no absences, so we'll proceed to presentations. We actually have four this evening. Uh, first up is community service awards, um, and or cons community service award, not plural, excuse me. And Parks and Rec Director Scruggs will be taking the lead on this. Director Scruggs, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, I am here. Uh, this is a really a nice uh, event that, that uh, M Parks has every year. Uh, we're able to nominate a community service award um, for each of our communities. And this year, uh, we, have, we nominated Fellowship Baptist Church. Um, they have been sponsoring our movies in the park for 10 years now. And um, I'm sorry, since, 19, uh, uh, since 2009 um, that, that they've been um, sponsoring, so eight years. And um, they have come in and not only um, monetarily have sponsored, but they come out full force and they have uh, all sorts of snow cones and uh, different uh, games for the kids to play and, and giveaways for the kids and tons of um, uh, door raffle prizes that they gather from the community. And they just make it a, a much bigger and better event than Movies in the Park already is. And uh, for that reason, that's why we uh, felt that they were very deserving of, of uh, uh, the 2018 Community Service Award. Um, the event was held uh, April 18th. Unfortunately, Pastor Tom, actually if he would come up, um, was not able to attend the uh, formal ceremony up in Lansing. Um, that event in itself is very inspirational. Uh, you see people from uh, the UP, from the west side, east side, everywhere around Michigan who do wonderful, great things, projects, sponsorships, and we were very proud to have um, Fellowship Baptist Church as our representative from Celine. And I would like to represent um, their award. Um, it's presented to Fellowship Baptist Church in recognition and appreciative, appreciation of outstanding contributions and devotion for the advancement of parks and recreation and leisure, leisure services for Celine Parks and Recreation. So thank you very much. Yeah. Carla. Pastor, we, you. Oh, sorry. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All righty. We'll do a little formal We'll do this. <laughs> Pastor, is there anything you'd like to add for the record? We'd be delighted if you'd uh, care to share some remarks. Sure. We count it a privilege, and we're truly honored and humbled by this expression of appreciation. We love the Celine community, all that it represents, and it truly is our honor to partner with this wonderful community and uh, just add a little bit more value to an already awesome community. And thank you all for your service and all that you do as well. Thank you, Pastor. We appreciate it very much. Appreciate everything you and your, your congregants do. And I'll also add, in addition to what you've done to support Moving in the Park, over the years you have provided a number of volunteers that have supported our Celtic Festival. Um, and uh, I just received so many compliments uh, in terms of their commitment, passion, work ethic. Uh, they really provide an important contribution to a really quality event. So thank you for that. Thank you all. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Okay, moving on, we have a presentation from uh, Councilwoman Dillon, who chairs the uh, Drug Task Force. So Janet, the floor is yours whenever you're ready. So 
hopefully this will work. We had a little bit of technical difficulty earlier in the day. And we're setting it up. So I chair the Saline Community Addiction Task, uh, Prevention Task Force. Um, it's a very long name. Uh, we usually refer to ourselves as the Drug Task Force, but this is our real name. Um, let's see if we can get this going here. The only thing longer than our name is our mission statement. <laughs> We have used every letter in the alphabet numerous times, I think. Um, I will not bore everybody and go through it, but generally what our mission is, is to bring awareness um, to the prevalence of substance abuse in our community. Sorry, the mouse is stuck. It doesn't want to move. Chase, how come this isn't working? There, we'll, oh, there, there, we'll, go. there we go, we'll do it just manually. Um, this is our current board of directors. I have been the chair um, since we became a task force um, in 2017. We actually became a task force in 2016, but I took over in 2017. Um, we have Fire Chief Heft, Police Chief Hart, um, Dr. Latch from Saline Schools, Susie Antonell from St. Joe Mercy Health Systems. We've got um, some parents and community members, uh, uh, retired health professionals, and current staff at U of M Michigan Medicine on our board. Uh, this is a little tedious, sorry. It's being very manual. Okay. So like I mentioned, uh, this group was originally formed by the mayor and it was a coalition. In June of 16, we became a Michigan corporation and that's hence why we had to change our name. And then in October of 16, we actually became a 501c3 nonprofit, which enabled us to separate from the city to be eligible for grants and um, other types of funding. Sorry, this is just having some technical difficulty here. Um, here's a couple of just, just general statistics about it. It's like, you know, why do we need a drug task force? The U.S. has about 5% of the world's population, and it consumes 80% of the global supply of prescription opiates. Every 12 minutes, someone in America dies from an opiate overdose. In Washtenaw County, opiates have killed more community members than car accidents every single year since 2012 and nearly a quarter of American high school students use at least one illicit drug. So what we've done, um, in the past presentations, we have teamed with the Saline High School and Saline Area Schools, and we've done a presentation called Relationships and Choices and How They Impact Our Lives. We had uh, professional speaker John U. Bacon and Will Hager up, who is a famous uh, U of M football player, speak to the entire body of the high school. And they discussed um, relationships, bad choices, consequences, and um, it, was, it was very profound for the students and it was very well received. That was our first forte into presentations. In 2017, we did a presentation entitled Pass and Pitfalls. We uh, showed the documentary Chasing the Dragon and we had a panel of speakers. Um, that was one of the most well attended events for this type of thing. We had over 200 in attendance at the Saline High School. It was with students and parents at that point. And that forum addressed socio, social, emotional, mental health, and alcohol and drug issues. This just does not want to move.
It's just freezing, I'm sorry. Chase is coming. Okay, Chase. Oh, see, sometimes it, it went backwards. Um, I'll just do space. I'll just space. Okay, yeah. it's really, okay. 2018, we actually kind of found our, our ground and started doing some other programming. We have a yearly letter that we send to the parents of all of the graduating seniors at Saline High School, advising them of the ramifications to them as well as to the students for serving alcohol at graduation parties, the dangers of parties related to proms, and once again, making bad choices. Another thing that we bought this year that we've had great success with is our see and learn drug paraphernalia box. It's over in the corner over here. Um, it's actual items. We take it all over to different events and people can see firsthand what heroin looks like, um, what a crack pipe is, things like that, that people hear about but they really have never actually seen firsthand. Uh, we recently did a presentation entitled What's in Your Medicine Cabinet um, that was held at the Senior Center. And it was to educate seniors as to what medications they have, safe ways to dispose of them, and what their actual intended purposes are and their life expectancy of the medication and when it's time for them to be recycled. Uh, we recently did a presentation entitled Vaping 101. We teamed with St. Joseph Health Mercy, Mercy Health Systems, excuse me, um, and that was a presentation with a target audience of parents of middle school and high school students. It was well attended at the middle school. And we also support various county substance abuse events. Uh, we're sort of on a break for the summer. And so picking up in the fall, we've got a couple of events coming up. We are doing a marijuana documentary and, and a panel discussion, as well as we'll be doing an additional vaping presentation. Um, vaping is very prevalent right now, and education of parents is crucial. Um, we are also can, can continue to support um, our neighboring communities and county events as best we can. Looking forward to 2019, we are going to be bringing in a national speaker uh, for a large community event, and we will also be doing quarterly presentations and workshops on various topics, including mental health. Uh, we'll continue to partner with St. Joe Mercy for our programming, and we will continue to do our yearly letter to parents for graduating seniors. We also have a lot of projects in motion right now. We are just about ready to launch our new website, which will make us an independent entity of the city. Uh, we'll have our own direct portal for information and contact. And we are also working with community education, not the Saline Community Education, we're working for community education and awareness. We've purchased um, various types of handouts and materials that we will be distributing at our programming as well as at other events. And we are also pre preparing a reference slash resource information guide um, that is sort of a what do you do now type booklet and directing people of sort of step by step of how they can seek services, where they can seek services. Um, and one of our long-term projects that we are still have in motion is that eventually we would like to hire a part-time coordinator that would be doing a lot of the administrative and grant writing for us. As far as funding sources, we have a partnership uh, with the City of Saline and Saline Area Schools. We continually apply for grants um, through various avenues and we did receive a generous donation from St. Joe Mercy um, that has helped us get started. Um, we are also seeking access to the recent county um, mental health millage fund dollars um, through the Washtenaw Health Initiative. As far as our budget, it's, our budget is very fluid because it depends strictly on grants. Um, 
for the most part. Um, most of our program, our community events are about approximately $500 per event. And our national speaker would be approximately $3,000. We have website expenses. Um, as I mentioned, we are separating ourselves from the city, so we will have separate phone numbers and separate mail, um, like a P.O. box instead. Uh, we have educational materials that we purchase. And we also have document supplies and preparations, copies. Um, being a separate entities, we use Office Max or such, or, or if we use, make copies at the city, we're billed for them. So that is an expense we have to, to prepare ourselves for. And we also have some legal fees. Um, because we're an ongoing corporation, there's um, just some things we have to keep up with. Anybody have any questions? Questions for Councilwoman Dillon, Councilwoman Mitchell? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I uh, thank you, Ms. Dillon, so much. That was um, very informative. Um, I am wondering, it, it seems like you're benefiting the schools a fair amount. Do schools contribute financially to the das task force at this time? They do. Um, we have, um, we use different avenues for them. We're actually not a line item in their budget, but there are different organizations that, like their SAD program and such, that contribute to us. And just a follow-up question, is is that a, a yearly donation that they do where it varies? It, it's as needed. I see, okay, thank you. Additional questions, Mr. Gearbaugh? Um, as you were mentioning vaping, but how do you handle cigarettes and, and smoking in general? Is that anything that's considered part of the substance abuse program or is it not? We don't generally address um, cigarettes other than through vaping. Um, most people vape as a method to quit smoking and there are numerous studies that show that it does not generally work that way and what people end up with is just two bad habits. Um, but we have not addressed um, smoking directly. Yeah, and I understand that with vaping, you know, there's wet lung and some other things that can develop too that are more serious. So thank you for um, addressing that topic. Additional questions? Councilwoman Dillon, thank you. Appreciate your leadership. And okay. please extend our compliments to uh, all those who support the, uh, the uh, Substance Abuse Task Force. Uh, up next, we have uh, Kathy Crone, the Chair of our Arts and Culture Committee. Kathy, we welcome you here this evening. Thank you. Do you have a PowerPoint presentation? I do not. Okay, excellent. Chase, then I think you can uh, raise the screen. Okay. Kathy, if you wouldn't mind just waiting until the screen is all okay. the way up, and then you can begin your presentation. I'm going to give you a brief outline of our activities for the 2017-18 year because I believe you have our report uh, in your packet. So I won't go into detail unless there's questions, but I would like to recognize our committee members, Aramide Boatswain, John Anderson, Marcy Cameron, Catherine Downey, Heidi McClellan, uh, Cindy Baxter, who was a member and chair through last year, and Karen Delhi, who became a member in May of this year. Also, Linda Terhar, who is our council rep. So we had two goals this year. One was to promote public awareness of the Selene Arts and Culture Committee, and the other was to enrich the arts and culture uh, within the Selene community. In terms of our first goal, uh, we updated our website uh, to make sure that it reflected uh, all of the activities that have occurred over the years with our committee, not just this year, but over the past years. So it's almost updated right now. We have a couple things to add, but we're well on our way. We've also added a Facebook site, and we post there activities of the Arts and Culture Committee as well as um, items about arts that it might be of in general interest to the community. So we would encourage you to go to our Facebook site and not only to look at it yourself, but share it with others so the word gets out in the community. In terms of our goal of enriching arts and culture within the Sling community, you'll notice a big focus this year for us was collaboration with other community groups. And this occurred throughout our activities. Probably the one that we're we've received the most visibility for is Art Around Celine, the artwork that's been framed and posted around the community. This was an effort with uh, Celine Main Street and the Chamber of Commerce. In fall of 2017, we added five pieces to our original collection. 
Uh, these pieces were funded by Destination Am Ann Arbor. That we were able to get a grant for those. We're now well on our way to 2018. Uh, pieces will be funded for 2018 by Celine Main Street, the Rotary, and the City of Celine will put up six new pieces in the fall. We're also adding this year a map that will be available at various merchants so people can find where all of the pieces are. The other initiative that we're currently engaged in, it's in the works, is we're partnering with the Parks Commission and um, uh, Saline Area Schools Community Ed to take some of the pieces we'll be taking down in the fall and potentially having an art exhibit at Henny Field. That's still in the works. Uh, we're not sure exactly when that will happen. Uh, this year we were also assigned responsibility for the Bigsby Marionette Collection by the mayor. Uh, and what's happening with that is there will soon be an exhibit at Liberty School of some of the marionettes. We're working on having a rotating exhibit of marionettes at the library. The marionettes that are on display there now have been up for several years, so we want to refresh that exhibit. Um, Two of our community members are going to be conducting an oral history of the marionette collection in collaboration with the Michigan Oral History Society, and we're working on cataloging the extensive collection that right now is in the basement of City Hall. Uh, another activity this year, which was a collaboration between the Saline Arts and Culture Committee, Chamber of Commerce, Saline Area Schools, and Saline Main Street is the banners, the student banners. 80 students submitted artwork for the banners this year and 49 were selected for display and those should go up this summer. Uh, one thing that is a new initiative for us this year is we want to have more youth involvement in arts and culture in our community and for starters we are looking to have a student representative on our committee and we're working with Celine High School on that and hopefully in the fall we'll have at least one student representative to give us youth input and to start that journey. Uh, one activity that we had hoped to accomplish um, but does not seem accomplish accomplishable is um, we were going to do a sculpture with the old mod tracks. When we did a careful assessment of what those tracks looked like, it would have been cost prohibitive to go ahead with that sculpture, so we had to eliminate that from our itinerary projects. So that's pretty much our activities for this year. I want to thank Council for your support of us. Uh, we have a very energetic group and it seems to be growing and getting more energetic all the time. And I think we'll have more next year. Very good, excellent. Kathy, appreciate your time and your leadership. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions for the Chair of our Arts and Culture Committee? Mr. Gearbaugh? Um, do you have any information on the sculpture, I believe that was gonna be in Henny Field? Um, and then what the status is at this point? At this point, there's still funding being sought for that. Um, and hopefully the scope, we're, we believe the sculpture is gonna go ahead even with limited funding in a more limited way. Uh, but there's additional funding being sought through CARES. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Additional questions? Kathy, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Appreciate your time. Yeah. Have a lovely evening. Um, last, I don't know, is Jamail from, uh, you said the surrogate. Well, the floor is yours. We have a special presentation from Saline Area Social Services. Well, I'm not Jamail Aikens. My name is Mary Hancock. I'm a board member from Saline Area Social Services. And we would just like to thank Linda Terher. So I don't know if you want to come out here, if you want me to give this to you. Let but you we have many supporters at Saline Area Social Services. We have the area, um, individuals, families, businesses. We get our support from everywhere. Um, as the past couple years, as we've um, grown our new building, she was very helpful in us getting our new parking lot, which over 300 people come and visit our, our place to get food and assistance. And we just are very, very thankful, and we just want to present this to you as a big thanks from the staff, the family, the board, and everyone at Saline Area Social Services for your help in getting us our grant to get our new parking lot. Mayor Pro Tem? Um, well, I'm a little bit overwhelmed. This is, this is really amazing. Um, I, so 
what I was able to do as as the city's designate, designated person to attend the urban the Washtenaw Urban County Executive Committee was um, to help Saline Area Social Service get some funds from um, that body for the work at the facility. Um, and of course, so I was lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time to see the opportunity to get some of, get this funding directed to, towards Saline Area Social Service. So um, I have to say it's it, it's been one of my best moments as in one of the things I've done as a city council member. Um, I, I was just thrilled to be in the right place at the right time to be able to get this done. But the most important thing I want to say is um, we have a long tradition in Saline with Saline Area Social Service and lots of volunteer activity, lots of support over many, many years. Um, and so we all have a chance and I hope everyone will be on, look, on the lookout for ways to help Saline Area Social Service. Thank you. Well, please give Jamail our best and thank you for being here. And I, I would just add one thing for the, the public record, which is uh, Mayor Pro Tem Tahar, as is her custom, is being a bit modest. Um, she serves with great distinction on the uh, Urban County Board. Um, and, you know, when we first decided to participate, I think there was some cynicism as to whether we would ever derive funding. And her, her persistence and dedication has allowed the city to access some dollars um, and been able to support a very, very valuable uh, entity in our community. So um, you guys are on a really great trajectory right now. Uh, keep up the great work. We appreciate you being here. Uh, I know that the city of Saline supports you um, and we're willing to, to work with you in any reasonable way to uh, ensure your success. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. Um, we have no further presentation, so we'll proceed to the, uh, to, excuse me, we'll proceed to citizen comments on agenda items. Under the Open Meetings Act, any citizen may come forward at this time and make comment and question on an item that appears on this agenda. Comments will be limited to three minutes per person. Anyone who would like to speak is requested but not required to state his or her name and address for the record. Mary Hess, former long-term council member. Uh, I have, uh, at the last meeting, I asked at the beginning what our entitled, what our total indebtedness was and then I ask again at the end of the meeting. I was given some papers and it appears that 12,900,000 is in arrears for pension and 16,992,000 is for other things. Uh, mostly for the disposal plant, I think the recreation uh, or water. And I don't know if this includes the 6,000,000 that went into the disposal plant this year. But uh, I thank for the papers that I did get. The other thing is 18121, revisions of to the Oak Ward Cemetery. Uh, over the years, of course, I wish more people were interested in the cemetery. Usually, you know, they're all dead. But uh, I have uh, noticed that tonight you have a big change proposed on the rules that have uh, not been changed since I know of, of 1971. And that is stones. Now I took pictures of some stones and I thought I'd send them to some people, but I will take more pictures. And I said, the stone is in our cemetery. It appears it was moved by a growing tree, but it will do, but it appears nothing will be done to correct it. Tonight, Saline City Council will address a request for over $2,000, replacement cost of a chip seat on a gravestone. Over my 22 years on City Council, requests such as these were turned down. Check with your homeowner's insurance because the city is not responsible. There are many gravestones damaged by a former firm that was contracted by the city to mow the cemetery. Therefore, they should also be repaired by the city if it doesn't believe in selective treatment. I saw these stones damaged and I approached Mr. Fodice about it and then the city took over uh, redoing the cemetery again. I hope 
the city looks at changing the rules tonight for one man very closely. The other, I got a little bit more time. The other thing was the capital improvement program. I have uh, for many, many years trying to get, talking about historical, getting our windows fixed on our mausoleum that is over 100 years old. And I guess my time's up. Thank you, Mrs. Hess. I'll be at the back. Are there additional comments on agenda items? Then we'll proceed to the consent agenda. The following consent agenda will normally be adopted without discussion. However, at the request of any citizen or council member, any item may be removed from the consent agenda for council discussion. Mayor, could I remove C18-120? C, yes, you may. Let me just make sure I got it. C-18, uh, oh, gun safety? Yep. Yep, so that will be the one, C18, that'll be the second item under new business. If I'm correct. Okay. Do you want to make a motion then, Mr. Gearbutt, to approve the consent agenda as amended, noting the one subtraction? I will do that. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Tahar. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to new business, item 18-119, charter amendment process and resolution for approval. Let's start with just a motion to acknowledge receipt of the June 5th, 2018 memo from Bond Council Roger Sweats and the June 18th, 2018 memo from from City Attorney Nick Curcio. So moved. moved by Mr. Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Seconded by Council Member Seo. Um, between Mr. Campbell and uh, Attorney Curcio, would you like to comment for the public record what changes have been made subsequent to um, our last meeting, which was a special meeting um, this past Thursday evening? Nick, are you able to take the lead on that? Maybe comment on your memo of. Uh, uh, June 18th? Yes, I can do that. So you have two um, revised drafts uh, before you on the dais tonight. They are intended to be substantively identical. Um, the uh, Bond Council, uh, Roger Sweats, uh, prepared a draft on June 15th that was sent to you uh, towards the end of the day on Friday and uh, re basically responded to some of the input given on Thursday. Um, substantively, the changes in that draft um, are, are all laid out in this memo, but uh, in brief summary, it narrows the scope of what uh, this millage could be used for. It has um, a qualifying language regarding that it can only be used as part of a street project, and um, it replaces the word ramps with accessibility improvements, and it re removes the reference to the, the um, capture by the, the LDFA uh, for reasons that I believe were discussed on, uh, at the meeting on Thursday. Um, we got some comments that the, the new draft was, was difficult to, uh, perhaps uh, to understand, so we kind of reworked and restructured the language in a uh, subsequent version that is an attachment to my June 18th memo and is labeled draft uh, June 18, 2018 at the top. This is the version um, that staff is recommending approval of this evening. Um, although both are, are given for your consideration. If you preferred the prior draft, you, know, you could certainly take action on it. Um, but the current motion is to adopt the version, um, uh, the proposed motion is to adopt the version attached to the June 18 memo. Right, okay. very good. Thank you, uh, Mr. Curcio. Are there questions for our legal counsel? Ms. Tahar? Um, yes, thank you. Um, in the so in the uh, latest draft, the one that's being recommended, um, in the language of the proposed amendment to the Saline City Charter, so that's item number two on page two, um, it says authorize, the, the, um, the question is, shall the section be added to City of Saline Charter to authorize a property tax levy of an additional one mil? Um, so as I understand it, I asked for clarification about this, that means um, the, the amendment would be to, to uh, allow the possibility of up to one mil. It doesn't specify that one mil will always be levied. Is that correct? That's correct. It okay. adjusts the cap. Um, so it adjusts the cap by up to one mil in the, up to 2023, and then you know, subsequently the voters could approve something less than that as an adjustment to the cap. Right. Okay, so this, this doesn't lock us into particular action for five years, every cool. year for five years. Okay, Correct. great, that's, that's all I needed, thank you. Very good, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Tahar. Additional questions for legal counsel? Any discussion on the motion? Mr. Seal. 
I just want to say uh, there was some some uh, discussion back and forth between council members earlier in the week about the previous uh, memo proposed by Mr. Sweats, and uh, I didn't know it could, the language could be as clear as you've made it. So I want to compliment you on simplifying it to the point where I think that uh, most people should be able to understand without Latin terminology in there. And so thank you very much, Nicholas. Thank you. Additional comments? Uh, remember, we're just voting on the motion, uh, just considering the motion to acknowledge receipt. Uh, Ms. Mitchell? Um, I just also want to echo Mr. Co's uh, comments that, that um, I'm going to plead guilty as the one who asked for more simple language. Um, and I just, I appreciate greatly that I think everyday citizens can read this and have a, a better understanding. And that's, that's where we must start when we're asking citizens for this, this action. So echoing thanks. Very good. If there's nothing further, we'll proceed to vote on the motion to acknowledge receipt. It's been moved by Gearboss, seconded by CO. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it, the motion carries unanimously. We move on to the second portion, which will be a motion to approve or not to approve the proposed resolution dated June 18th, 2018, and to approve and submit the language of the proposed addition to section 10.3 of the city charter to authorize a dedicated street right away millage. Move to approve. Second. Second. Seconded by CO. So it was moved by Tahar, seconded by CO. Discussion. Ms. Tahar. Um, I, I, again, thanks for the simplification. I also think it's, it's very important that we have narrowed this down, made it very specific, and I believe what we are asking the voters to approve is enough money to keep our streets and roads usable um, without being extravagant. I believe this is what we need. I don't believe it's an over ask, so I'm very much in favor. Very good, thank you, ma'am. Additional comments, Mr. Gearbaugh. Um, whenever we do things like this, I feel more uh, appropriate when I think we have the voters vote for it, and this type of a millage increase is dedicated to their decision to um, decide whether or not they wanna add to their tax base or tax um, liability. Um, the one thing with this one is that there are other opportunities of how we could have raised revenue, but I would rather it not be made by a decision of seven. I'd rather have it be made by a decision of the majority of 10,000 people. Mr. Seal? Just to kind of echo and expand upon what Mr. Gearbaugh said a little bit, I think many times um, other methods are used to finance streets, and this is sort of a what we call a pay-as-you-go sort of a situation where the current residents are paying for current um, enhancements to the road system or upgrades or even just maintenance to the road system. And I think it's an important uh, way for us to proceed. Uh, the people who are paying need to reap the benefit of the money they're paying and see it in reflected in the condition of the roads in our community. And, and I think it's an appropriate thing, and I, uh, I certainly hope that uh, the majority of the citizens uh, recognize that and support this in the upcoming election. Well, one question for you, Mr. Curcio, before I, I read a statement. Um, my understanding from Mr. Sweats' next steps is that this document will go to Governor Snyder's office and Attorney General Schutte's office for review and approval. Um, do you have any insight as to when we can expect um, uh, feedback and approval to give the voters some certainty that this will appear on the ballot? We have a letter drafted that if the, if council were to adopt the amendment, to, uh, to the proposed amendment tonight, we would send that letter to both governor and attorney general's office tomorrow, um, asking them, uh, you know, noting that we're hoping to get this on the November ballot and asking for their prompt input. Um, it, it's They don't have any obligation to respond to it timely in order to, to, put, to get it on the November ballot, but we're hopeful we could work with both offices to, to make that happen. Very good, and of course, uh, I know that Dickinson Wright will notify us as soon as we receive the approval that we're requesting. Correct. Well, let me just first say that, uh, that I'm cognizant of the fact that there has been a piling on of millage requests of late, um, and I'm, I'm sensitive to that. Uh, and this, of course, is a direct result of the state not assuming the appropriate level of responsibility relating to the support of vital municipal services. 
However, restatement of the dilemma is not a solution, and perpetual admiration of the problem serves no purpose. I think a key component of leadership is telling the truth and on occasion having difficult and frank conversations with the people you serve. I believe we should be in, uh, investing robustly in road maintenance and that good quality roads and streets have a direct impact on our citizens' quality of life. As such, I support this ballot proposal and believe it will have a positive impact on the Saline community. For perspective, in the past, uh, the city has incurred debt to fund road projects. In fact, the voters approved approximately half a mil in 2001 and 2004 to support street construction. Essentially, we are continuing to pay for roads that are close to the end of their useful life. And I know we can do better. Uh, this pay-as-you-go approach will improve the quality of our streets and do so in a fiscally responsible manner. Finally, as we move forward, I would ask that our citizens maintain objectivity. While some may not be inclined to support this, please allow the city the opportunity to make its case. Of course, the flip side of this is that blind faith and confidence in government is never beneficial, and our citizens should expect and they should demand that we prove the need for this and articulate in clear and compelling ways why this millage request is good for our area. I look forward to these conversations and welcome feedback and questions from any of our citizens. Uh, again, I support this proposal. I support our citizens making the, making the decision on this important policy matter, and I will be voting in the affirmative. Is there anything further? Then we have a motion on the floor moved by Tahar, seconded by CO to approve. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Ayes have it, the motion carries unanimously. We move on to new business item 18-120. This is a motion to approve and adopt Mayor Marl's proclamation of June 17th to June 23rd, 2018 as Gun Safety Week. Um, move to um, adopt with one um, suggestion. There is, there is some newer information regarding um, the number of deaths and so forth. Um, currently the proposal says 2011 and there is some 2016 information that I think could be useful. Um, what numbers do you have? I'm happy to accommodate. Okay. And these are from, actually from an article that was in M Live, but also from some other information from CDC and so forth. What I'd like to address is the, give me here a second, apologize. Take your time. Um, in 2016, there were 1,223 Michigan residents killed as a result of guns, um, of which 59% of those deaths were suicide or a number of 717. I think it's important that we identify that with gun safety. As, as we've noticed in the past couple of weeks, suicides, even celebrities and those things have increased and we need to have that kind of awareness. But gun safety, no matter what, the availability of guns and those type of things for those individuals, um, I think this is a proper document to um, and support the mayor and his proclamation for recognizing this concern. Absolutely, and I appreciate the uh, um it's unfortunate I don't have the other number that's in the No, but I appreciate thing, you but providing more um, up-to-date and relative, uh, relevant statistics. Um, I know that the deputy clerk jotted down some of your suggestions. Do you want to read those back? So it would just be amending, if we're not mistaken, Mr. Gearbaugh, you would be amending the fourth paragraph. So uh, deputy clerk Bloom, do you want to read what he's proposing? <clears throat> so are we changed in the 1,000? In 2016. 1,152 to 1,263. 23. And then going down to the second sentence there, these gun-related deaths, 716? 717, I apologize. Oh, okay. okay. Can I have Deputy Clerk Bloom, for the benefit of the audience and those at the dais, can you reread that fourth whereas in its entirety, noting Mr. Gearbus changes? All right, whereas overall firearm deaths in 2016 reached 1,223, making it one of only 10 states where they surpassed motor vehicle deaths. One of these gun-related deaths, of these gun-related deaths, I'm sorry, 717 were suicides, making up over half of all suicides, and 626 were gun-related homicides, making up 78% of all homicides. Michigan's aggravated assaults with a firearm in 2011 at 7,679, 86.1 um, 
86.41 per 100,000 residents. We're the seventh highest in the country. Okay. Is that sound right? Everyone clear on those changes? We just have one other change is that the homicide number should be 506. Is that homicide statistics Instead as of, of 2016? Correct. It's the difference of the number of um, suicides in the, so 506. Okay. And then the 11 gets changed to 2016. 16, yeah. Everyone clear on those changes? Okay. So Mr. Gearbaugh, I'm sorry, I, I actually did this improperly. Mr. Gearbaugh did make a motion to approve the proclamation as amended. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay. Seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Tahar. Okay. Thank you for uh, providing some relevant update statistics, Mr. Gearbaugh. I think that improves the resolution. Thank you. Um, if there's no further discussion, we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to new business item 18-121, revisions to Oakwood Cemetery rules and regulations. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the June 14, 2018 memo from Mayor Marl and to approve or not to approve the changes to the Oakwood Cemetery rules and regulations regarding damaged headstones. Move to acknowledge and approve. Thank you, Mr. Seo. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Mitchell. Uh, well, I'll just comment briefly in my capacity as chair of the Oakwood Cemetery Task Force. Um, of course, you will would have read my cover memo um, to the document that, contain, that contains the uh, recommended policy changes. But as has been noted, we have received uh, many complaints and inquiries over the years about damaged headstones and monuments. Um, we were made aware recently of an incident where a city employee um, proactively acknowledged that um, their actions resulted in a chipped, a damaged headstone. Um, so we began to have a discussion as the Oakwood Cemetery Task Force. We had numerous discussions, some protracted discussions, um, and actually unanimously are recommending the changes that are before you this evening. I think personally, um, from the perspective of being good stewards um, and trying our best to accommodate the people whose uh, loved ones are resting for all of eternity in Oakwood Cemetery, that this is a, a, a positive step uh, in the right direction and uh, provides um, area residents with recourse in the event that a monument or headstone is damaged. I also want to acknowledge, because he, he worked tirelessly to, to accommodate uh, our, our needs and uh, to alleviate our, our concerns, Mr. Curcio was the individual who drafted the policy changes. So if there are specific questions regarding the legality of the proposal, um, he would be best to, to address those. I don't know if, so just for everyone's benefit, the Oakwood Cemetery Task Force is comprised of myself, Mayor Pro Tem Tar from City Council, Mr. Seo from City Council, Jim Roth represents the Saline community, and then from staff, it's the city clerk, the deputy clerk, um, Mr. Rubel, our city engineer, superintendent, and then the city manager. Okay. Questions or comments? Mr. Gearbaugh. Um, I probably would like a little more background in terms of how this came about, but one of my questions is, is when will this be effective? Will it be retroactive or will it be effective going forward after our vote? Take that, Nick. As written, it is not. It isn't limited to to um, claims, you know, to damage that occurring after today's date. It could be used to to reimburse um, previously incurred damage, but there would be you know, the requirement that that pr that um, you know proof of that be brought forward in a sufficient uh, manner for the board to approve. If you wanted it to limit to prospective claims, that was something that you could do, but the current language does not do that. Okay. Um, one of my concerns with that is that issue of retroactivity because I believe and even myself have, spot, have seen and experienced damage to monuments in the last 10, 15 years that we were told that they could not be repaired or they were not the responsibility of the city. Um, my concern is with this one is also I think the monument that we're dealing with in this situation was also a special um, circumstance and was granted a you know, a variance or was granted an exception to be placed into the cemetery. So there's a number of items on this request that I believe has some history, history to it. Um, if we wanted to move forward with it, that would be my one concern, but I would also want to, if we had to, retroactively restrict it to a period of time if we could. Well, let me comment on that. I, I, I'm certainly, obviously, as the, <laughs> the chair of the Oakwood Cemetery Task Force, um, I'm very much in favor of, of moving this forward and implementing this change. I 
Um, I can see some merit to Mr. Gearbaugh's request, and if he were to propose an amendment to limit um, retroactivity to a period of, of 10 years, uh, I, would, I would be supportive of that. Again, I think I want to underscore a comment that Attorney Curcio made, that the burden of proof is on the individual to, to establish facts that make it crystal clear that the city was responsible for the damaged headstone or the damaged monument, barring somebody proactively acknowledging that their action caused um, a chip, a crack, uh, et cetera, to a, to a monument or headstone. And one clarification, too, on that. When we say city, does the city encompass monument companies or grave or those that come in and open those? Because I know recently, having seen or had our monument moved as a result of a grave being opened, it's like who's doing which and we don't know who's all responsible. And I'm like understanding that there's a number of people going in there, but a lot of the destruction or damage was done as a result of our mowing. I know it has been um, because there isn't any other bigger equipment going in there except when some of the graves are being opened. I guess for me, would you have to understand that clarification of exactly when does the city become responsible versus the monument company or whatever and who's giving permission to whom and who's going to be responsible. There's a lot of opening of the door that we're doing as a result of this. And I'm just trying to understand a little bit more before we take on a liability that we don't want to, since we already have it set up not to do that. Do you want to comment on that, Nick? Because obviously sure. that particular question of, of contractors and individuals or groups doing work in the cemetery did come up and was discussed at length at our last uh, cemetery task force meeting. Right. As, as currently written, this only applies to damage, damage done by city employees as opposed to city contractors. The, the thinking, I, I think, of the task force was that that there would be other uh, means of recourse against the contractor uh, you could claim directly from them. Uh, the, the person who owned the headstone could claim directly from them, um, and it wouldn't be the city's responsibility. Now, you could um, amend this to include city contractors, and then the, the city would then pay out the claim and try to recover from the contractor under the terms of its contract, but that's not how this is currently currently written. Okay. Anything further, Mr. Gearbaugh? Nope. Additional questions, Mr. Seal? Just a comment. I just want to say, as a member of the cemetery task force, when this uh, particular individual first came to our group with a request for payment for the damage caused by a uh, city em employee operating a city vehicle in the cemetery, uh, without being aware of the clause in the cemetery board regulations that exempted the city from any claims, it seemed to me, uh, out of a sense of fair play, that we should assume responsibility for payment for uh, damage. And um, I'm glad to see that we've come forward with this particular amendment to the, uh, the rules and regulations. I think it's the right way to proceed, and I will support this. Additional questions? Ms. Dillon? I'm just struggling with um, determining the responsibility um, because what you're indicating is that an employee has to own the responsibility has to come forward and say, I did this. No, that's one. That's one avenue for recourse. Right. It would be an employee or employees acknowledging fault or an individual proving their case to the Cemetery Board of Appeals that indeed the city was liable for the damage. And in the past, how many of those claims were brought for? To the Oak or to uh, the Cemetery Board of Appeals? Yes. I, I couldn't comment on that without yes. reviewing minutes um, from, from previous meetings. I can, I mean, I can assure you, and I think the deputy clerk who's, uh, who's been involved with the cemetery for nearly 20 years can, can uh, express support for this that we have received numerous inquiries and complaints over the years from individuals regarding damaged headstones and monuments seeking some level of compensation. That is true, yes. Right. And so I, I understand the idea of trying to right a ship, but at this point, what about all of these people that had made claims that were dismissed? Um, well, again, know, there's, no, there's nothing that bars retroactivity. Well, that's the other aspect of it is, I mean, are we just opening the Pandora's box here um, to it, you know, it, it's not the, necessarily the cost factor of it, it's the administrative process of handling all of these claims. 
I guess we may have a bit of a philosophical difference. I, I believe that citizens or community members whose loved ones are laying at rest in Oakwood Cemetery should have recourse in the event that a headstone or monument is damaged. But they, they didn't don't. up till this individual came forward is, is what is where I'm, I'm sh having an issue that this was not an issue that was taken up in the past. Well, help me we understand. Had, so we had a process. So we had a bad policy before, so we continue the bad policy in perpetuity? No. It is, I feel as though we're making an exception and changing the rules midstream at this point. Um, it just seemed like there's just a, an awful lot of alignment that an employee came forth at, at for this instance. Um, I'm sure that employees have damaged stones before, yet they've never come forth. And so I, I'm just struggling with that a bit. Okay. Ms. Mitchell? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. So I, I really do appreciate that one of our employees came forward. I think that speaks to a trust in management, and I, I really want to applaud that employee, although I don't know who she or he is. Um, I just wanted to double check in the discussion about city employee versus contractors for folks who are coming in to open graves or, or do other tasks like that. Is our mowing, so I'm, I'm like a lot of it is mowing, and the, that is our employees that's not contracted out, is that correct? Currently, correct. Okay, I thought at some point somebody told me that we had contracted, but maybe that was in the past, I, so I just need to clarify that. Correct. Um, in the past, yep, we have in the past. in the past, yep. I see, okay. That's accurate. And does this policy, when we're thinking about budgeting and and how we're handling having employees do this work versus contractors doing the, the lawn service. If we decided to change in two years, if we decide to contract out the lawn service, what would happen to this policy? The, the, the mowers would not be, damage caused by the mowers at that point wouldn't be covered by this policy. Again, there may be potential recourse that an individual would have against the contractor but it wouldn't be to go through this policy through the city. So it would, it would have a practical in, impact on um, how claims are processed. Okay, so I just wanna make sure that we're hooking those things up. It's, it's hard to keep track of things. <laughs> and I'm thinking of, you know, which center island has the irrigation uh, system and which doesn't and is, during our budgeting process from now going forward, are we gonna recognize that making a contracting decision is gonna affect this policy? That's my... I think, I, I, if I may, I think that's sure. an important thing to, to, to make note of. I will also add, because this provides me a good opportunity to compliment the, the Department of Public Works. I will tell you that since we made the transition from contracting out that service to bringing it back in-house, mm -hmm. I have received numerous compliments of how much better the quality of work has been because I think our folks, um, I think they're very conscientious and they take a lot of pride in, mm -hmm. in our cemetery and, that cert and the service that we provide to, to area residents. Well, that's, that's really great. Um, I'll be supporting this. I think just like anything else that the city does, I think it's important to take ownership. I think that it builds trust with the, the people who, who entrust us to, to spend their money and make decisions, I think it's an important thing to follow through and, and take care of the things that we need to take care of. So I'll be supporting this. Very good, thank you, Councilwoman. Additional questions or comments, Ms. Dillon? I just wanna clarify, how is this different than the mailbox issue where we give a stipend amount uh, versus this is an open-end dollar amount? Mm -hmm. uh, second. Okay, the amount. Yeah, so the, as far as the, the open-ended part would be, I mean, it's the um, cost of the repair rather than to replace it. Um, but um, so yeah, this is essentially depending on on um, 
the significance of the the damage is done right that could if it's just a, a, a repair versus replacing the, the entire stone for instance um yes that could be you know that, that could be uh um that'd be much more expensive than to your point of of the, the hundred dollars for mailbox but, but yeah this does this is open-ended uh, currently based on based upon repair only versus hey you you damaged you know you damaged it so i want it replaced well we won't replace it but we'll, we'll play we'll pay for the repair what if it's not repairable that's a good question um i don't know if if um mr curcio would like to provide his thoughts As written, this is this refers to repairs. Um, I'm not sure that we address a situation where there was complete damage to the point where it would need to be replaced. I mean, in one point, it does refer to repair slash replacement. I think it could be construed to to cover a replacement cost if it was determined that it would that repair was not possible. So, in terms of the open endedness, it does say city requires an objective opinion on the damage uh, of the stone and cost to repair. So that does provide some ability to the city to to review that estimate. Um, but I, you know, I think theoretically it could, could cover up to the, the full cost of a, of a replacement if interpreted that way, because it, you know one sentence refers to repair slash replacement. Anything further, Ms. Dillon? No, thank you, Mr. Seal. I just want to remark on two things. Uh, when we were reviewing this update, um, if I recall correctly, Mr. Curcio, wasn't it your opinion that uh, this might very well avoid um, lawsuit because people would have recourse regardless of what the old policy said uh, if they brought suit in court against the city for that, damage? That, that's correct, and that's an important point, and I should have brought that up earlier. So the, the city's policy it only you know, the old policy was just said that there was no administrative claim against the city. That d didn't mean that someone who was turned away by the cemetery board or turned away by the city council couldn't have sued the city in a negligence action um, and possibly have been successful for that. Now, th those claims I don't think were ever brought. They would have been maybe expensive to do so, but there w was potential liability. This doesn't create liability for the city. It just provides a kind of more streamlined administrative process for um, for making a claim as opposed to going to court. Please. The second point is that, uh, you know, just speaking from personal experience, uh, when our family headstone was first made up for my mother and father, uh, one of my brother's date of birth, my mother predeceased my father, and she was normally the one who was the, the glue in the family, if you will. So my father provided the wrong date to me. <laughs> person preparing the headstone for one of my brothers, one of the dates of birth. And uh, we noticed it and pointed it out. And the person who provided the headstone was able to, uh, through using some kind of marble powder or granite powder and, and epoxy, repair the date and re, um, uh, redo it, re-engrave it to the point where it was virtually unnoticeable. So I'm amazed at the kind of uh, powers that these people have to repair stones, and I think it would take uh, a heck of an act to totally destroy a stone. Additional comments, questions? We have a motion on the floor, uh, moved by CO, seconded by Mitchell, to acknowledge receipt and to approve. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Nay. Ayes have it, the motion carries six to one. We move to new business item 18-122. This is capital improvement program. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the June 12, 2018 memo from Deputy Treasurer McDonough and to approve and adopt or not to adopt the capital improvement program document for FY19 through 24 as outlined. Move to approve and adopt. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Tars. Or second? Second. Seconded by Council Member CEO. Ms. McDonough, do you care to make any comment this evening? Um, no, I don't really have anything to say unless anybody else has a question. Or Mr. Uh, Fordyce, any comment on this? No? Okay. Uh, questions for city staff? It's no, easy. I, I was uh, at, oh, yeah, okay, Mr. Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry, Mayor Pertim-Tar, please. It's, 
<laughs> Sorry, Jim. <Jimmy. laughs> it, it's actually just, it, it's a terminology question. Oh, okay. So um, I'm looking at, uh, it's in each of the fiscal year reports. So I'm looking on page five for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2019. Um, source of funding, it, one of the sources of funding is called debt service. It's a bond. It's the bond. Okay. I, I just, I, when I saw that, debt service in my mind means we pay out, we don't receive in. So I, it was ju it's just a terminal. Yeah, it, it's actually, it's what we are paying on the bond that we received to, okay. to initiate the project. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Additional questions for our Deputy Treasurer? Ms. Dillon? Um, page seven on fiscal year 20. Are we still budgeting $150,000 for Salt Spring Park improvements? Um, last I heard, yes. There's a grant coming too. There's like a 50% grant coming for 75,000. Okay. So there's a original estimate of 150 with the grant of 75. I'm not sure what the scope of the project is. Thank you. Okay. Additional <laughs> questions? Okay. In discussion on the motion. Joanne, thank you again. Appreciate okay. it. It's been properly moved by TAR, seconded by SEAL to approve and to adopt. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Uh, so the motion carries unanimously. We move on to new business item 18-123, uh, support agreement for the Saline Community Addiction Prevention Task Force. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the June 14th, 2018 memo from City Clerk Royal and to approve or not to approve the FY1819 support agreement for the Saline Community Addiction Prevention Task Force in the amount of $1,000. Move to acknowledge and to approve. Thank you, second. Mr. Kubo. Is there a second? Second. Is that CEO? Thank you, sir. Um, Deputy Clerk Bloom, I know you didn't draft the memo. Any comment that your office would like to provide at this time? Not unless there's any further questions. Okay. Questions for the Deputy Clerk or for staff? Questions? Yes. I Ms. have Dillon? no question, just a comment. I will not be voting. I will be abstaining from this vote okay. since I will be signing the agreement. Abstention noted. Questions for staff? Discussion on the motion? Proceed to vote then. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. And one abstention. Carries. Six in favor. We move on to new business item 17 145, D. N. Higgins, pay application number two. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the June 13, 2018 memo from city manager, or from city manager, from city superintendent engineer Rubel, and to approve or not to approve pay application number two to D. N. Higgins in the amount of $489,845. Move to acknowledge and approve. Thank okay. you, Councilwoman Mitchell. Is there a second? Second. Seconded again by Mr. Seo. Mr. Rubel, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> well, we're, uh, we're happy to report that uh, MCI and Dean Higgins did a, a uh, superb job in laying out the projects, completing the work, arranging the subcontractors, providing the appropriate materials. And uh, so uh, the engineers and staff, after review of the project, uh, consider that the uh, pay request number two can or should be authorized or possibly be authorized. Uh, at the amounts uh, shown in the pay request. Um, as you can see, the, uh, the, the projects did uh, come in uh, under, uh, under estimate uh, as far as the proposal is concerned. Um, so if you had any questions uh, regarding that, I'd be happy to answer those. Very good. Questions for Mr. Rubel? Mr. Gearbaugh? Um, just clarification on the Oakwood Cemetery, the $4,000, that was a retainer payment, meaning that was just what we held back from their right. work they did last fiscal year? Correct. Okay. And do you, do you recall what the final cost was for Oakwood Cemetery? Um, I think it was somewhere around 142, th no, I was talking about number four. Uh, it should, it may show on the pay request, uh, although those are just the current projects that's all right. Um, uh, we can find that information later. Yeah. Um, the only question I had, um, and this may be more for Jeff Fordyce, I noticed there's a lot of gravel that's laying on all the roads that, you know, when they didn't reseed or whatever, I didn't know whose responsibility is to clean some of that up because it's it's on the drive and everybody's right. driving over it and everything like Correct. that. So um, Yeah, they had to, uh, because of the, you know, low turning radius, right, like right, with right, narrow right. drives, people cut the corners and, uh, churn up the gravel from time to time, so it's probably a maintenance issue. Okay. Thank you. Additional questions for Mr. Rubel? Discussion on the motion. 
It's been properly moved by Mitchell. Thank you, Gary. It's been properly moved by Councilwoman Mitchell, seconded by Councilman CO to acknowledge receipt and to approve. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to the discussion portion of our agenda. First up is Commission, Committee, and Task Force reports from Council members. Mr. Hart. Um, from the Environmental Commission, one last reminder. Saturday, June 23rd from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. here at City Hall uh, for City Residents Shredding Event. Um, this is free to City Residents. Um, and um, there is a fee for this, but we have a sponsor, the Schmerberg Law Firm is paying the fee this year. Um, and um, there is a limit on how much you can bring. Um, on the poster, it says three bags, and on a story I saw in the Celine Post today, submitted by a member of the Environmental Commission, it said five bags. So I'm not sure which what the limit is. You can interpret that as you will. But this Saturday, 9 to 12, or until the truck is full, whichever comes first. Very good. Additional committee commissioner task force reports. How about reports or other announcements? Uh, Just an update on the banners. I appreciate the... Uh, patience of the winners and the DPW. We had a little issues in production on getting the banners uh, the right the right size and all, the, all kinds of good stuff. Um, but they are coming soon. And so for the winners, please keep an ear out for the ribbon cutting announcement coming shortly. I wanna get them up and on the polls before we schedule that. So I appreciate um, Jeff Fordyce and his team dealing with um, all the issues that we've had with them, but they are coming and I'm excited to do the ribbon cutting with the students. So. Great project, thank you for your leadership on that. Additional reports or announcements, Mr. Gerbaugh. Um, I just wanna invite everyone to the 4th of July celebration that will occur on June 30th at the Selene Depot, being hosted by the Historical Society. Um, we're looking forward to having some of the same events we've had in the past and there'll be the Velocipede will be out and there'll be um, tractors and some of the other things just to kinda celebrate our 4th of July uh, Sunday on a Saturday. Good. And of course, don't forget about fireworks later that evening, 10 o'clock. Um, actually, this day. is um, on the 30th, oh, June me. 30th. I'm sorry. We it's a 4th of July celebration, but not on the 4th of July. Correct. I, it's I'm on the 30th preceding the 4th. Um, Thank you. Yeah. And I would also note two other events. Uh, I announced this in the past. Uh, my seventh annual senior conference is this Friday. Folks can still RSVP by calling the Celine Senior Center. And then also next Tuesday, beginning at 6 p.m., the Celtic Festival will have event, an event at the uh, at Imagine Theater here in Saline, and we'll be doing a special showing of one of, I'm sorry, I'm not knowledgeable about Star Wars, but one of the Star Wars movies. Um, and we will have some of the folks, um, I forget the troupe's name, but they, um, they have the, I, I'm gonna call it Hollywood caliber costumes, um, and they'll be appearing as various characters from, from Star Wars, not Star Trek. So apparently that's a big deal. Um, so uh, it should be a really nice evening. And as I think you um, saw in an email I sent out two weeks ago, if you would like to attend, um, I will be happy to pay for your ticket. Just let me know. Um, but again, it is kind of a first come, first serve. Um, so the sooner you buy the t your tickets, the better. Uh, and then finally, um, with the support of council members Gearbaugh and Tahar, well, let me take a step back. Many of you will recall that the police chief and city manager and I met with the folks of Huntington Woods phase one about a month ago to discuss a variety of concerns. And one of the things that came up was construction activity um, and the hours in which that is permitted. And I had a brief uh, subsequent conversation with Mr. Fordyce uh, and he indicated the only thing that the city has to prohibit or restrict construction activity was a resolution dating back at least four decades, if I recall correctly, Jeff which is really not enforceable. So speaking to the chief who was very familiar, who is very familiar with this issue because of his experience in Novi, uh, we are going to recommend that city council adopt an ordinance to regulate construction activity. Uh, and again, Mr. Gearbaugh and Mayor Pro Tem Tahar have taken a look at this and they've supported the initiative. I'm gonna pass out a draft tonight. Um, I would welcome any feedback that you may have. Uh, and I also wanna note that this will appear as an action item at our next council meeting on July the 9th. Now I understand for Mr. Gearbaugh's benefit and Mr. Har's benefit, a few minor changes have been made subsequent to the last draft. I think you made them, Mr. Curcio, and I don't think they really have to do much with substance. I think they're more style, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I, I think that's correct. Okay. So Mr. Campbell, if you'd pass those down. And 
Deputy Clerk Bloom, if you'd pass those down. And I'll actually leave a couple extra with the Deputy yep. Clerk. If you'd like an electronic copy, you're welcome to email her. Remember, the clerk is out this week, um, and Amy would be happy to provide you an electronic copy if that's your wish. Again, I welcome feedback, and this will be an action item at our next meeting on July the 9th. If there are no additional reports or announcements, wastewater treatment plant. Uh, Mr. Fetchik, are you going to take the lead on this? For, for lack of a better way to, uh, to, to express the sentiment, we were on sort of a hot streak there with very few odor complaints, and then, then we hit Friday. We were. We were, and, and we've had uh, several complaints probably in the last four or five days. Um, I think I probably the change in the weather has contributed to that, and we've also had the one of the clarifiers out of service that did have some sludge in it, and I think that has probably been the main source of our complaints because most of them have come from the uh, Crestwood and Wood neighborhood just behind, just up the hill from the plant. Is that equipment back online now? It, this morning it went back online. We had to do a few things over the weekend and we accomplished that and this morning we put it back online so I hope that will help to alleviate the, the problem there. And we also had one other issue with the odor scrubber. We had a motor that went out I believe on Friday on one of the pumps, recirculation pumps. We, we have the motor on hand, we just have to find the time. I think. We may have it uh, taken care of by uh, an outside contractor, and we can get that back in service probably, uh, hopefully, in the next two days. Okay. And we're still adding the same amount of chemicals at the same frequency, is that correct? Yes, we are. Okay. That really seemed to be having a, an impact and a positive one, especially for those individuals and residents who, uh, who, um, who are neighbors of the plant. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add, Mark? Um, I think that covers it, unless uh, there's any questions. I'm sure it will be asked, how are the Nova filters? Well, we've had a couple different issues. Um, we had, first week of June, we had a couple of screens on the filters ripped. We took them down to clean them. We discovered that. That caused a problem. We had, we had th that piece of equipment on hand, so we replaced those. They were operating pretty well for about two weeks, and then we had a power supply that went out, which kicked the drive out, and I replaced the power supply. It was shipped overnight to us. I replaced the power supply. That didn't correct the problem. I believe uh, there's maybe a problem with the VFD, which is controlled by that power supply. So I'm in the process of finding out how that's going to be rectified. And just uh, for the council's benefit and the public, um, a representative from NOVA will be here at the first meeting in July. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Very good. Questions for our city manager or our wastewater treatment uh, interim director? Ms. Dillon? Several residents complained of a chemical smell, not the normal poop smell. Um, is there something going on that's chemical? Um, I don't believe so. I think the, the day that that complaint came in, we did get a shipment of alum, which we use um, to help precipitate out the phosphorus in the water. I, generally, that does not have a smell, uh, but I, that's the only thing that I can, I can think of where that, that complaint may have come from. But n no, there haven't been any changes as far as the type of chemicals or the, the usage of the chemicals. Thank you. Additional questions? Mark, thank you, appreciate your time. Um, Mr. Fordyce, are you taking the lead on Mill Pond Park Pathway? Uh, so Mill Pond Park Pathway was the continuation of the, <clears throat> the wide sidewalk uh, down Bennett Street into the park. Uh, we were attempting to get that completed uh, prior to Celtic Festival and um, the only way, uh, given the timeline that we had, that we were going to be able to complete that is if we were able to do it as a, another contract amendment on the, uh, the current Higgins contract. So we worked on a, uh, we completed a design, <clears throat> and then we worked on a, a cost estimate quote with, uh, with Higgins. And um, despite their best efforts, um, the dollar figure that we ended up with seemed high. Um, so. Um, 
we opted to uh, take a step back and we'll, we will uh, take that design package. Actually, um, Gary Robel is looking it over, trying to do some value engineering on it, trying to find some areas where we might be able to reduce construction costs. Um, and then we will advertise it publicly for bids uh, with construction in the fall. So the goal would be to get that completed this construction season? Yes. Very good. Mr. Gearbaugh? Can you entail what's all involved? Because I understood there's sewer re sewer changes or something too? Yeah, so there's been uh, an ongoing problem along that extension of Bennett Street um, after the curb ends with stormwater drainage. Um, it has eroded away the edge of the pavement on occasion. Um, sometimes it's been so bad that it, it washed out um, side uh, the asphalt walkway uh, further down the hill in the park. Um, so there's, so that's, I'd like to address that while we're there doing this construction. And it so happens that at least one of the stormwater inlets is in the way of the sidewalk extension. So that has to be moved. Um, and then additionally with the, the side slopes that we're dealing with, one of the techniques we're using to deal with that is to install curb along a portion of that so that you know raises the grade six inches and then we can hit our ADA slopes. Um, and the other two stormwater inlets along there, um, they're, they're not catch basins, they're like yard inlets off the edge of the pavement. So the stormwater has to you know, stream down the hill and make a left and travel across rocks and grass and then get in there. And it, it just never has effectively worked. Um, so that's why there's a stormwater element in this, in this design. So this is more than just a sidewalk. <laughs> It's, I mean, the, the location of that one has to be addressed so that the sidewalk can go there um, and then to preserve the investment in the sidewalk and not have an ongoing erosion pro problem there um, hitting these stormwater issues okay. at the same time. We don't have any of that concern with the sidewalk that's already been installed? The new sidewalk? No, because that section is all curbed. Okay. It's like right at the that's property true. line there is where the curb ends. Okay, okay. thank you. Additional questions for Mr. Porax? Ms. Dillon? When you do put in a sidewalk, will it be the same non-motorized pathway to match it, and will it go all the way? Uh, as it's currently designed, it's the same width, um, full ADA compliance, and it goes all the way to the parking lot, so it will replace some of the degraded asphalt walkway up down there. Okay. Additional questions? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. So since the project is not going to be done, I know when I was down there for moving the park, where that sidewalk ends, mm -hmm. there's sort of a collection of gravelly leftover cement. Yeah. Um, um, who's so responsible for that? Well, so that what's left there was from the, the contractor that installed the sidewalk along uh, the Cypress Ridge frontage. I think the gravel that's there right now is actually kind of a help in, in sort of smoothing out the end of that sidewalk, which is a little bit abrupt. Um, but uh, prior to Celtic Festival, uh, we're going to acquire a, an ADA compliant sidewalk barrier and kind of close that at the end of that paved sidewalk and try to figure out a temporary pathway to get people back onto the pavement where we have that you know one stripe that's supposed to kind of designate a, a pedestrian pathway there. So looking at how to f make that safer and smoother and, and accommodate the crowds of Celtic Festival. Fantastic, thank you. Anything further? Mr. Forrest, thank you. Please keep us in the loop on this because obviously the connectivity there is, an, is important and getting that done this construction season should, should indeed be a priority. So yeah. thank you for your work on this. Uh, if there's nothing further to be brought up during the discussion portion of the agenda, we come to the second public comment period under the Open Meetings Act. Any citizen may come forward at this time, make comment or question to City Council. This public comment period will be limited to three minutes per person. Anyone who would like to speak is requested but not required to state his or her name and address for the record. Mary Hess, I would just found out and was very disappointed that Mr. Fodice says he has had no replies on repairing the mausoleum windows. Now the mausoleum windows were damaged by a city employee, Dick Cole. The back windows had plastics put on it because he was could see somebody taking a BB gun and shooting the windows. But that was 30 years ago. And over the years, it has ants, and it's definitely destroying the frame. This is a city building that the city built over 100 years ago. 
and the compassion is wonderful. This is approximately a holding area for about 170 spaces, counting niches for ashes and caskets. I would hope that we could do something. When they brought the, ball, the wall in, I was on council. They brought the wall in and they cracked a whole bunch of marble slabs. That was done by a city employee. Can we fix those windows? It's a beautiful building. And we put $15,000 in for windows, but it looks like the capital improvements is gonna put maybe $250,000 in Teft Park for a splash pad. It's a beautiful cemetery. It has our history. We go to a farm, we go to the depot. It has beautiful history. Please embrace the mausoleum that is on the National Register. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Hess. Additional citizen comments. Please note our upcoming meetings. Um, and now the chair would entertain a motion to convene into closed session to consider material exempt from discussion or discourse by state or federal statute, in particular for the purpose of conducting a personnel evaluation, an annual evaluation for a city manager. Uh, he requested the closed session. Uh, city Council will reconvene into regular session at the conclusion of the closed session. Is there a motion to convene? So moved. Moved Second. by your buzzer. Second? Second. Seconded by Mitchell. The deputy clerk will please call the roll. Okay. <clears throat> Council Member Seo? Yes. Council Member Dillon? Yes. Council Member Gearball? Yes. Council Member McClellan? Yes. Council Member Mitchell? Yes. Council Member Terhar? Yes. And Mayor Murrow? Yes. We are adjourned in, or we are reconvening into closed session at 8.56 p.m.